All right, I'm gonna break your hearts a little bit. We, are you ready? Are you ready to have your hearts broken? We, we cannot call this slip and slide. No, no, you're in high school. We cannot call it slip and slide. Reagan, do you agree with me? Reagan, Reagan? We, we cannot call this slip and slide. We have to call it slide divide because we are in high school, not middle school. It has to be slide divide, not slip and slide. It's slip, slip and slide. You guys, slip and slide. You guys, we are not, we are not children any longer. We are not, we are not childish. Adults can use slip and slides, but we are in. Okay, here, here's why. Here's why. Because I've been teaching high school for 13 years and I've never once called it, I've never once heard it called slip and slide. It's kitschy. It's like, it's weird. It's weird, you guys. No offense. No offense. Middle school teachers who might see this. No, you guys. You guys. All right. Um, so we're going to call it slide divide bottoms up. You'll get used to it. I promise. I'm just, I'm just bringing you up to the high school level. Okay. So, so we're going to, we're going to change it from slip and slide, which makes me cringe a little bit to say it like that. Okay. We're going to, I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm going to stop lying to you. I'm not sorry at all. Uh, we're not doing slip and slide. We're doing slide divide bottoms up. Um, bottoms up. It's because it describes the process. Slide divide bottoms up. Um, a lot of people say slide divide to shorthand it, if that makes you feel better. Not slip and slide. If you say slip and slide, I'm just going to pretend I don't know what you're talking about. I like slip and slide. I do not. So um, for the slide divide method, not to be confused with slip and slide, which is a game you play on a lawn with a hose. No, it's a game because you have to, you, there has to be a rating system and, and somebody has to win and somebody has to bleed or else it was not done right. Thank you. Yes. Um, if you're being really serious, there's, it's got to be somewhat of a downward slope and then, and then there's got to be soap involved because you got to go a little bit faster. Um, somebody's slightly chubby uncle has to be a little bit too competitive about it. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to do two times 18. Two times 18 is 36. Okay. So that's the slide part. Two times 18 is 36. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 36, but add to negative 15. So you know that you're doing the slide divide method when there's a number in the front, um, but it's not a GCF. It can't be taken out. So this is not like number 11. Number 11 had a two in the front as well, but that two in the front was a GCF. This time there's a two in the front, but it's not a GCF. There's no way you can take it out. It has to stay there. So that's why it's important for every single problem to always look for a GCF. Because if you do the slide divide method on a problem that was supposed to have a GCF instead, you're going to factor it incorrectly. Okay, so this was not a GCF. That means we're doing the slide divide method because it had a number in the front. So 2 times 18 is 36. Um, we're multiplying to 36. We're adding to negative 15. If those numbers are just a smidge too big for you, we're going to do 36 divided by x. And we're looking at the negative numbers because we're multiplying to a positive. So two negatives that multiply to a positive. Negative 12 and negative 3. <clears throat> Ooh, I need water. And this is not the answer because we haven't finished the other words yet. So we've only done the slide, we haven't done the divide, we haven't done the bottoms up yet. <sighs> Slip and slide is something you do with somebody's chubby uncle. That's that was weird. That sounded weird. Don't do that. Uh, so, <laughs> somebody else's. <laughs> um, all right. 
So we slid the two, so now we take the two and we divide by two. Now, if those fractions, because that's what we just did, we made fractions, if those fractions can simplify, you do so. So 12 over 2 cannot be simplified. Yes, what can it simplify to? 6. So we got x minus 6. And if it cannot simplify, that's when you do the bottoms up. Ooh. So this is where we get 2x minus 3. That automatically made you think of shots? Yes. Oh, like that type of shots. I thought you meant shots like you were getting shots in your butt. That... <laughs> I have my... So let me explain. I have migraines. When you get shots for migraines, they stick them in your rear end. So the last time I got a shot, it was in my butt. I just had to explain because she said bottoms up and she didn't like shots. And I was like... Why is this girl getting shots in her butt? Like, because most of you guys should not be getting shots in your butt, but she was actually making an alcohol We're reference. I'm sending this to Officer Huffman. He needs to know that we have students in Honors Math 2 that are making bottoms-up jokes about drinking alcohol. And then he's going to be like, Miss Rice, you were on tape talking about getting shots in your rear end, so... About you drinking alcohol? For a minor with possession of alcohol? <laughs> well, are we in Massachusetts? <laughs> All right, next problem. All right. Is five a GCF? No, so let's slide that five over to the 48. This is a good one because it's going to be a big number. Whew. 5 times negative 48 is what? Woo! That was not right. Negative 192. What? Oh, I did 4, not 5. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Negative 248. All right. So, now make sure... That when you're looking for your numbers that multiply, you are putting negative 240 here, because if you do positive, you're going to find the wrong numbers. So multiplying to a negative 240, adding to a positive 22. So here uh, we're finding one positive number, one negative number. Positive 22. I can tell I'm going the right direction because these positive values, like here we had negative or positive 118. Here we have, po Ooh, I was going to say the answer, uh, here we have positive 34, so we can tell we're going the right direction. So positive 30 and negative 8, okay, so P plus 30, P minus 8, and we are not done because we have only done the slide. We haven't done the divide. <laughs> if you guys want to do slip and slide, that's fine. But every time I need your attention, I'm going to say one, two, three eyes on me. No, I'm a high school teacher. I, it's terrible. It is why I refuse to say slip and slide. I am not a high school teacher. I am not a middle school teacher for a reason. I'm gonna thank you, Lily. I'm gonna be like one, two, three, eyes on me. Yes. And I'm gonna I'm gonna start bringing my iPad, and it's gonna have a little volume sensor, and I'm gonna be like, oh oh oh, you guys are a little noisy today. Let's bring it down five notches. Okay, so I'm just letting you guys know that if we call it slip and slide, there are other things we have to do. 
<laughs> no. We're not, we're not bringing it back that far, man. Not that far. All right. So <laughs> we multiplied the five over. So what are we doing now with the five? We're dividing by five. P plus six. So we reduce that fraction. This other fraction does not reduce. And so we do bottoms up with this other one. 5P minus eight. Okay. All right. Now, um, if you did not finish, if you did not finish number one, put an X in it, that's fine. Um, nine, 10, 12. You have permission to not do those. If you did them, that's fine, but you have permission to not do them. All right. Let's do number 18. 18. Whoa. Well, should we should we do 16 times 54? No. No, why not? There's a greatest common factor. It's at least divisible by two, but we should check and see if it's divisible by something bigger than two. Not four. Not, not four because of the 54. Not six. It's not three. It might just be two. Because 50, 54 divided by two is 27. So, so I think it might just be two. We will we'll find out if we get wrong. Well, these are these. Do these have a GCF? Eight, thirty, and twenty-seven. Okay, so that means we got the GCF out correctly when we took out the two. Okay, so we took a GCF out. Now, if we had not taken that GCF out and we tried to do slide divide, we would not have gotten the right answer at the end. I know. It would be so very sad. Just totally devastating. All right. What do we have to do? Not slip and slide. Not slip and slide. No. No. We have matured. We are in a whole different building. We haven't been in school for a whole year since sixth grade. We have not matured. Yeah, we literally have been in school for like two years. I'm telling you guys right now, you have matured. Okay, you have matured. No, no. I promise you, you've matured. I'm not gonna say I don't like middle schoolers, but I hate them. So you've matured. I promise. Okay. All right. So what what do we multiply together? Eight times negative twenty-seven is negative two sixteen. Okay, so if you guys have noticed, you're probably going to use the calculator a lot today because these are much bigger numbers. Okay, multiplies to negative 216 adds to 30. So we're not using the 2. We're only using the 8 and the 27. You, you don't ever use the squared, you only use the coefficients. 36 and negative 6. Uh, second quit. Right next to each other, second quit. Asa, second quit. I know, I know how to get out of the table. Oh, I thought you were telling him to quit. I thought he was doing it. How to what? Uh, he actually uh, like, be able to say, like, um, why, why equals. I was answering his question, but he didn't know I was talking to him. So. <laughs> All right, so 36 and negative 6. So we can put the 2 in front. There's our GCF. All right, M plus 36. Ooh. 
Um, if it's X, then I'm going to start calling you Ulix because the A doesn't matter because letters don't matter. I'm just saying I like your name is Ulix. Me too. I'm okay. I will email your parents and let them know that we're changing it. Ulix. No, it's just a different letter. It means nothing. Or alum. Alum is good. Or ulum. We can just change the beginning and the end. All right. So what are we doing to the 36 and the 6? Dividing by 8, not the 16th. So we're dividing whatever number you slid is the number you divide by. So we didn't slide the 16. We slid the 8. So the 8 is what we're dividing by. We slid the 8. Now the interesting thing about this problem is that both of those fractions reduce. You guys see that? They both reduce. So, yeah, both of the fractions reduce. We didn't have one of these before. So let's go ahead and reduce both of them. So we're not going to bottoms up yet. Don't bottoms up anything. Just reduce the fractions. So the top and the bottom are both divisible by 4. So if you divide them both by 4, what do you get? 36 divided by 4. 9. Uh, 8 divided by 4. Okay. Um, over here, they're both divisible by 2. Three-fourths. Okay, so now that we've reduced both of the fractions, because some students think that with slide divide, one of the numbers has to become a whole number, and that's not true. It is often true, but it is not always true. Okay, so here, both of our fractions just reduced. Neither one of them reduced to a whole number. They just both reduced. And now that we've reduced them both, now we can bottoms up. All right. This was a really good example problem. Good job, Miss Rice, for picking it. Why, well, thank you. All right. All right. Oh, hold, hold the applause. Hold the applause. I said good job, Miss Rice, for picking it, as in I didn't choose 15, 16, 17. I, I chose this one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We're not, we're not going to do all of them. So there we go. All right. How do you guys feel about slide divide? Um, Would you like to do another sample? Do you feel solid about it? Say it again. Well, as of right now, we are not going to do 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. So, should we should we call it good or should we do one more? Okay, let's do 15 and then we're going to call it good. All right. 15. We're going to do 15 and then we're going to call it good. Is 3 a GCF? No. Okay, so we're just going to start with the slide divide. So 3 times negative 40 is negative 120. That's what you meant. It was a typo. It was a typo. Okay. Negative 120. And so we're multiplying to negative 120. We're adding to negative 19. Negative 120 and add to negative 19. But better this way than having to think of it in your head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You will never win. Anyone figured out what the numbers are? Negative 24, positive 5.
Did everyone put the letter H, not the letter X? Yeah. No. <laughs> We're going to call you Havana now. Oh no! <laughs> I picked the right name then. All right. Um, so we wrote this. We are not done. What do we have to do? Divide by three. Okay. And then what do we have to do? Before bottoms up. Simplify. So twenty-four divided by three is. 8. Can 5 over 3 reduce? No. So this one we bottoms up. All right. Now, believe it or not, this is one of the baby animals. I just have to remember which one. The baby animal is not doing slide divide when it should be a slide divide problem. Um, if you skip the steps to slide divide, so you are doing the problem and you're like, okay, the two numbers are 30, or the two numbers are negative 24 and 5, and you just put them there and you stop. And that's your answer. If you stop right there, you kill a baby hippo. Oh, no. no. Baby hippo. Okay? So I'm just letting you know. I'm letting you know starting today, we're going to be on the lookout for those endangered baby hippos. Make sure we're not killing them. All right. So if you do not plan on doing these just for funsies, cross out 16, 17, 19, 20. 16, 17, 19, 20. You do not have to do them. 16, 17, 19, 20. 16, 17, 19, 20. All right. Last, last is difference of squares. No, these are these are the ones. They're easy enough that students forget how to do them. So it's probably that you didn't. It's not that you didn't like them. It's that you forgot how to do them because they were easy. So difference of squares is the formula is a squared minus b squared factors to two sets of parentheses. One with the plus, one with the minus. And the factors are a plus b, a minus b. And so students forget it because it's too easy. You don't work for it, and so you forget how it works. Yeah. yeah. So for 21, if we were to rewrite it, this would be x squared minus 2 squared. So 4 is the perfect square, um, 2 squared. So I rewrote it x squared minus 2 squared, and now I've got to write it as my two parentheses, one with a plus, one with a minus. And so what are my two parentheses going to be? x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, uh, 81 is what number squared? So this is actually y squared minus 9 squared. So if we factor it, what do we get? y plus 9, y minus 9. Miss Rice, what if I want to write y minus 9, y plus 9? That's fine. You be a rebel. You be a rebel. That is fine. All right, let's be crazy here. Let's be crazy. All right, this one. 9x squared, if we rewrite it, make sure you get your parentheses. This would be 3x squared minus 5y squared squared. Because it's y to the fourth. See that? See that y to the fourth? So 9 is 3 squared. x squared is an x squared. So if we have two things happening, this would be a 3 and an x being squared. So it's 3x squared. 25 is a 5 squared. y to the fourth is a y squared that is being squared. So if we put those things together, that's a 5y squared being squared. It's a lot of squareds. Okay, 
Um, but do we see how I kind of broke it down? Does it make sense now that you look at it again? Okay, so let's write our parentheses. Three X plus five Y squared, I heard that whisper, that was good. And? Marvelous, beautiful. You know it's beautiful because it's math and math is always beautiful. All right, this one, <laughs> this one is, we have an M squared and an N squared, so this is gonna be MN squared minus seven squared. Okay, so what's the first set of parentheses? Mn plus 7, and then Mn minus 7. Oh my gosh, on this one, they put it in the difference of square sections, but 72 is not a perfect square. Did they put it in the wrong yeah. section? No. You can still do it. There's a GCF. That's why it's in this section. Okay, so there's still a perfect square there. They just have a GCF. So can you tell what the GCF is? Two. All right, let's take the two. So, um, and then is there a GCF with the variables also? Oh my gosh, so we were talking I love. She said, yes. No. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> All right. 72 divided by 2 is. It is not 21. 72 divided by 2 is. Thirty six. Thirty six. Thirty six. I don't know. Two divided by two is. One. One is squared. All right. So we've got two is our GCF. Thirty six R to the sixth minus one S squared. Okay. I want you to think real hard, and we're going to see if we can figure out it's something squared minus something squared. And I want you guys to see if you can figure out what goes in each parenthesis. You're going to look back at 23. 23 is going to be the most helpful here. Is it? And then just to get enough lisp, you have to breathe like that too. <laughs> <laughs> So, what's the square root of 36? All right, and then we have r to the 6, so what would we do there? r cubed, very good, okay. And then we have the 1, which we don't really have to deal with because the square root of 1 is just 1, it's, it's just 1, okay. And then, did you say x? S. S. All right. Yeah, you can put 1s. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, the 1 is fine. No 1 is fine. That's fine. That's good. All right. So now, what goes in the parentheses? And we make sure we have the GCF of 2. GCF of two. Huh? What? Um, figuring out what goes in each spot. Because see how it's different than this? Sometimes it helps to write it out like this first so that you don't accidentally put a 36 in there or accidentally put an R to the sixth in there. Um, a lot of students, you can go straight there. All right, um, 26, what do you guys think we should do? 
Yeah, take out the GCF. What's the GCF? It would be 2A squared B. 2A squared B, okay. And then what's left over when you take all that out? 1 minus 16A squared. Okay. So that's a 1 squared minus, what is this? 4A squared. Okay. So we got 2A squared B. Beautiful. All right. So go ahead and search in your binder and see if you can find your factoring packets. Factoring packets. Yeah, last time you guys were like, this is so big. Okay, okay, try to raise it. Okay. Okay. All right, here is here's the next set of problems. So, what happened to the baseball player who was unfaithful to his wife? Oh, this is a high school worksheet. So, you guys are going to do this one. Murder. Um, so, it says, write the trinomial form. Um, find the factors. One factor will have a letter and the other will have a number. Yeah, so we've done we've done one of the ones that kind of works like this before. Okay, so you're going to do this page. All right, so this is a slide divide page. Go ahead and turn the page. Then we're going to do this page, and we're not going to do all of it. So I'm going to tell you, um, I'm going to make it so you can do the punchline, though. Okay, so the way that this one works is it says to circle the number letter pair of each expression that is the difference of two squares. So they are not asking you to factor it, but I want you to. So I'm going to have you add to the instructions and factor. Okay, so they're asking you, they're not telling you to factor them, but they're asking you to recognize which problems are the difference of two squares. For example, you are not going to circle this one. Why not? It's plus. It's the sum of two squares, which is not factorable. Okay, you're not going to circle that one. Uh, the very first one, 27O, you are going to circle that one. 9n squared minus 4, that is the difference of two squares. I am adding some extra instructions for you. I'm asking that you not only circle it, but you also factor it, because the worksheet doesn't ask you to factor. Okay? Now, they're telling you um, that you should circle, this is a hint, you should circle 9 in each column. Okay, they're telling you to circle nine in each column. Now, we are only doing half of this worksheet, so I'm going to tell you um, which things to circle that you don't have to do so you can still do your punchline, okay? So in the next column, we are not going to do any problems in the next column. I'm going to tell you which ones to circle. Are you ready? Okay, circle the first one, 5A. Circle the second one, 17G. Circle the fourth one, 26i, and 13e. And 32p, and 6s. 
and 24A. And 1I and 19T. So you don't have to do any problems in that column. Yep, you just got to circle those. So again, here they were. 5A, 17G, 26I, 13E, 32P, 6S, 24A, 1I, 19T. Those are the ones that you had to circle. Okay. Now, in the right column, again, you're circling the ones that are true. We're only going to do about half of these, okay? Um, in this one, you don't have anything to factor. You are just circling. It, it gives you the problem, and it gives you the factors, and you're circling the ones that are true, okay? Um, they have a mixture. These are called, um, what are they called? Perfect square trinomials. I think they're square trinomials, perfect square trinomials, I think is what they're called. Um, and I'm not asking you to deal with ones like that, though. I'm not asking you guys to deal with ones like that. I couldn't find a punchline worksheet that only had difference of squares. So this worksheet had difference of squares and perfect square trinomials, and I didn't want both, but this is what I found. So um, the ones that you're going to circle here are 10L, 21R, 28N, 15E, 23L, and that's it. One, two, three, four, five. So there's four more for you to circle in that column. Because you're supposed to have nine circled in each column, so you're gonna you're gonna have to circle four more on your own. So 10L, 21R, 28N, 15E, 23L are the ones that I did for you. Okay. And then the rest of that, so you're going to circle four in this column, and you're going to circle nine in the first column, and those are all appropriate difference of square problems for you. Okay? So the plan for today is to do for sure this page front and back, and then depending on the timing, uh, that's probably all we're going to do, is this page front and back. What I'm going to do for the last page is I'm going to make the very last page, that third page front and back, is extra credit. Okay, third page front and back is extra credit. Third page front and back is extra credit. And these pages, that last, that last page, the third page front and back is a mixed review. So it's supposed to have a little bit of GCF on it. It looks like they're mostly trinomials from what I can tell. There's a binomial right there. But they are mostly, oh, there's more binomials over here. So it's supposed to have GCF and the trinomials and the slide divide problems. It's supposed to have a little bit of everything, okay? So the only thing you have to do is the second page front and back, third page front and back is extra credit, okay? Tomorrow we're gonna keep factoring, but it will be an activity. All right, any questions? We good?